Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, we are going to be unboxing and taking a look at a brand new product from Trinity Stamps. I hope you'll stick around, see what's in the box, and see how we're going to use it. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. A couple weeks ago, Trinity Stamps reached out to me wanting to know if I would like to showcase a new product that was going to help card makers plan out their cards. Well, usually when I get reached out to, I'm a little bit picky about what I end up taking on. And just hearing the words planning cards made me more intrigued. So I'm like, yes, please bring it on. Well, then they told me a little bit more about what I would receive and I was so happy that I said yes. Now, while Trinity Stamps did send me the planner for free, all of the opinions in today's review are going to be my own. But I have to say I'm already really excited. Are you ready to open this box? Okay, first of all, right out of that beautiful box, a few things I noticed is I've always wanted to be a planner. And in the past, I've bought lots of planners, you know, that you get at like big box stores or online. And this reminds me so much of that. So I have high hopes that finally I'm going to do it. The covers are a nice laminated and then you have a nice wire bound coil, nice and sturdy. I love that. There's laminated front and back. And let's go ahead and take a look inside. This is a fun addition. There is a stencil. So if you know, I believe that there are gonna be pages with diagrams that you can sketch out your cards. So here, if you know that you're gonna be using like a circle die cut, you don't have to just freehand a circle. They give you some different sizes to use, some fun borders, and then a ruler is always handy to have. It fits in this nice little pocket here. Now, if I ever go somewhere and lose it, I can put all of my information right here. The tabs, oh, this is fun. You have A2 sketches, A7, mini slimline, slimline, and other. So let's take a look at these pages. Oh, here on the divider page for the A2 sketches. They give you some good matting sizes. That is handy to have. Oh, okay. Now I want to kind of show you how I plan on using this. And one thing that I was going to do was make my own color palette and they already have a little section for me. I love that. And then here is your A2 sketch or your A2 card. And it already kind of has a grid, you know, for your rule of thirds, like you should put your focal points kind of where those lines meet, or if you want to, you know, keep it in the top third or the bottom third. And then I plan on kind of using this for videos. So you have the project for you could do like a video idea or a company if you're a design team member for and then I'll probably put the date that the video or the post has to go live here. Hopefully that'll keep me a little bit on track. So these are portrait here. I'm just gonna flip. Oh good. I was hoping, I love to do horizontal or landscape cards. So the front you have portrait and the back you have landscape. So that's awesome. I love that there are both options for that. 
and there are plenty of pages here in this section. Look at all that. So just all that for A2. Nice. Now here we're going to move on to the A7 and it has that same thing with your mats. Now for myself, I don't make a lot of A7 cards, so I'll probably keep a few pages for that. But then I think like, I don't know if I'll ever run out of A2 sketches, but since these are rectangles too, I could see myself coming and using this if I run out of space in that front section. So that's a good option to have. And again, lots of pages there for you. And you have the portrait on the front and the landscape on the back of the pages. Mini slimline, I do love a good mini slimline. Now let's see. So they would have their mini slims at three by six, which is pretty standard. I myself usually do three and a quarter by six and a quarter. Um, but again, it's more of just the orientation or no, the dimensions, you know, how one side's skinnier, one side's longer, that you could still use this even if you do a different size mini slim line. So for me, this up here might not be as helpful, but hey, if I ever decide to switch to three by six, which is probably an easier size to use, um, then I will already have my mat sizes. Have a portrait and then landscape. Again, I just love that that you get both options. And then you have your full size slim line, which would be um, three and a half by eight and a half for your your card base and then it gives you your panels and your mat sizes and this luckily is the same size that I use for my full size slim lines once again though I'm probably more likely to make a mini slim line than a full size one so if I run out of room here I can again see myself coming and using this oh, I just love the color palette thing and finally other sketches. Let's see what's in here. Oh, you just have some nice dot paper. Okay, so you could do shaped cards, square cards. One thing that I think this will be used for are my ideas for sheet load of card sketches. Because right now, I'll be like, you know, upstairs and get an idea. Or down here, I have like, five post-it notes and three sheets of paper all with different sketches this is going to be super nice to have them all in one place and not only will i have room to like kind of sketch out the card but then i can kind of figure out the cutting guides too love that just a nice bonus now this paper it is um it's not a card stock but it does seem like a nice thick white so we'll check out later if there's much bleed through when we do the writing but anyway so far I like it a lot here in the back of the cover it gives you all the information on how to connect with Trinity stamps I will make sure to have these links as well as their online store and this planner in the description box below so make sure to go check it out and get some more information are you ready to see this planner put into action? So by the time this video comes out, I will have already shared a special video here on my channel where I'm gonna be helping four of my crafty friends celebrate 4,000 subscribers on their YouTube channels. So what I want to do today is kind of help myself get started. So I'll be picking out the color palette, any stamps or stencils, or maybe embellishments I'm going to use. And then as I'm making the video, this will be right there to help me. Now at the end of today's video, I hope to show you the cards I've made that I planned with you today. And to see that full video, make sure to check out the description box below. Now by the time this video comes out, unfortunately the hop is over. Um, so you won't be able to win the giveaway, but you'll still be able to be inspired. Since I know that the cards I'm going to create are going to end up being A2, I am going to move to that tab in the book. And this project is for 4 at 4K giveaway. Now, I like to do my writing with the Paper May Ink Joy gel pens. Um, normally, they don't bleed through, but let's go ahead and check it out. 
I cannot see any of the ink and I purposely use black so it would be dark. Now I do see like a slight indent of where that writing is but it is not bleeding through on my pen ink. Now, if you do find it is bleeding through, I'm not sure if everybody gets this, but in my box was a pencil. You probably already have a pencil at your house, but let's go ahead over here. And this video is due July 29th and it's um, nine o'clock AM my time. So with a pencil, of course, you're not gonna have any bleed through and I probably feel the bumps a little bit less on the back. So I would say test out whatever pens you like to use with your book. And then later when I go to do my little swatches, we'll see if the ink bleeds through to the other side. For this, I know that I want to use my tailored expressions word party create and quad. Now this is a special create and quad as part of a club. So it's not available, but I think it's going to fit perfectly with the theme of the hop because I'll show you in a little bit. I have to use four different colors. It's one of each of the creator's favorite colors for my creations. And the fact that it creates four cards when I'm done, that is just a bonus. So I'm also, I want to figure out what inks I want to use. So I'm going to go do a little research and find what everybody's favorite color is and put it here. Okay, so you're gonna have to pardon my handwriting. Um, it's not always the nicest unless I sit down real formal like, and I just wanted to see how this was used. But I wrote down kind of a description of each of their favorite colors. And I'll show you here, this will be the thumbnail for the video and each person has their color in the background. And now I want to bring in my cardstock swatches and try to match these up with some inks. In my stash here, I have card stocks with matching inks from Tailored Expressions and Gina K Designs. So what I do is I have their card stock swatches on rings and depending on the shape of the tag, it's which company it is. And now I'm just gonna kind of hold this up to my phone and figure out kind of which colors might match their favorites and see what I have that is closest. So I know like Kendra, it's like a peachy color. So I think for hers, Gina K Designs Peach Bellini is gonna work great. And now I'll figure out colors for the other three. I went ahead and pulled my four inks and already I love these together and I think they're gonna make some fun cards. Now I want to swatch each of them out over here in the color palette area. And to do this, it is kind of random, but I have the Paper Crafting Magic stamp set from Trinity Stamps and it's just got lots of little icons. Now these are made for interactive cards, which I got this when I tried out Amanda of Pear Blossom Press who this is her favorite color, I tried out her lights. So if you've never used those, those are super fun too. So I think I'll just use this little kind of diamond right here because it looks like a pretty good size for the color palette. And I'm just gonna stamp one of each in there. As I was doing my ink swatching, I did make sure to clean and dry the stamp well between each of the colors. And I did try to go from my lightest ink to my darkest ink, just so I wouldn't contaminate any pads in case there was a little bit left on there. Now, one thing I did realize I forgot to do was show you the bleed through. There was a little bit of bleed through with the ink and up on screen now is a photo of that. I don't think later after I write on that side, it will interfere with anything. Thing, but I did want to let you see that. So I have my color palette all ready and I know right now that Jelly Donut seems a little bit darker than Sierra's color but I do know that I'll be stenciling with this so it's going to end up being a little lighter on the cards. Now the stencil set I'm going to use, like I mentioned, you stencil four different stencils and then you cut them to four cards. So here's a look at the back and two of these are landscape and two of them are portrait. Now one thing I noticed is that the landscape cards kind of have some confetti at the top and bottom and the other two don't. So what I think I'm going to do is since these kind of look like shaker cards, 
I'm going to make the portrait one, the thanks and celebrate, into full front shaker cards. Now, even though I only have one sketch here, I'm going to make it work for these four cards. So my sketches might be kind of little with what you might do when you only have a single card, but I wanted to give you a good idea. I was just having a revisit of the stencil to see if there were any rectangles. There aren't, we just have squares and circles, which, you know, it's not a big deal. I could still use the edges for a straight edge and even get out the ruler if I wanted, but I just wanted to check. Today, I'm just gonna freehand these. I also decided to switch to my pencil just in case I want to change something, it's going to be much easier with this. The inks are set in stone, the Create and Quad is set in stone, so I think using a pencil for this is going to be perfect. But I did just notice I put CIG instead of CIQ, so we'll fix that with the pencil. So I have two that are going to be Portrait, and then two that are Landscape. And I know that these two, I'm going to make a full front, or you might call them infinity shakers. So I also know that I will need my Duralar film, and that's what I use most of the time when I do infinity shakers. It's just a nice, thin, clear, heavier than like your packaging acetate, but works great for shaker cards like this. And we have our words here, and then I'm gonna, it'll be a little bit smaller than the card base. I think I'll do a portrait card. And then to represent the shaker bits, I'm just gonna tap some dots. And I will want to use my diamond dots for my shaker bits. And I'll do my best to pick colors that go with this. Now for the landscape, since they already have that confetti look, these are pretty much just going to go straight onto the card bases, which I'll make landscape fold like that. And we got our big word and then our confetti at the top and bottom already stenciled on there for us. And I think maybe I'll just scatter some pearls around there in the colors. So let's do our cat scrappiness pearl mixes. And then I'm gonna wind up with four cards using just that one stencil set. Okay, so I have to say right now, this has been so fun, just kind of planning this out. Now I might actually switch when I do other cards to using a pencil because, you know, like here I could have fixed that error or maybe when I actually go to do it, I'll see that something has to be changed. I'm not sure yet because I really do like how these gel pens write, but this was totally fun to plan out. If you want to check out this planner for yourself, if you want to be a little bit more organized like me, because I will tell you I'm pretty scatterbrained lately and anything that I can get to help keep me organized is great. I will have the link to the planner and the Trinity Stamps online store down in the description box. It is an affiliate link. I make a little bit if you decide to purchase, but you're not charged any extra. And it'll just kind of let Trinity Stamps know, hey, we came from Alicia's channel and maybe they'll invite me back when they have other exciting releases like this. I hope you enjoyed that little card planning session with me. And now let's take a look at the cards that I ended up creating. And here they are. We have our two infinity shakers. I did end up putting some white cardstock on the inside and I cleaned off my purple brush in the purple stencil just to add some confetti. And I just used like one of these portions of the stencil to do that. It's a great way to clean off your brushes and add a little more decoration to the inside. And for the landscape cards, like I said, I was just going to put the white piece flat down onto the card front, but you'll see here that I did add some little pearls for some shine and added dimension. Same thing on the inside of these, I added my white cardstock and some purple confetti. I will have this video linked in the description box below and as an end card at the end of this video if you want to check it out. And I think that planner helped me kind of focus and pull my supplies together so that I could quickly create these for my other video. 
I hope you enjoyed this little planning session and getting to see the brand new Trinity Stamps Sketch Plan Create card making sketchbook. I have to say that I am so glad I said yes to making this video. I'm going to find a nice special place in my craft area where this is easy to access for future cards. In the comment section below, let me know your thoughts on the new planner. What was your favorite feature? Maybe what you would like to see added. And I can't wait to read those. I'd like to say thank you to Trinity Stamps for sending me this fun planner to play with. I definitely look forward to seeing it more in the future. And speaking of the future, until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.